Thank you. Thank you very much, Judy. Um, we're absolutely delighted to be here this afternoon, and I was lucky enough to hear some of the uh, presentations this morning, which are absolutely fantastic. So um, great to be with you um, and share our lessons learned from a quality improvement project in perinatal excellence. Um, and that project is perinatal excellence in reducing injury in premature birth, um, which we call periprem. Um, Sarah and I um, have a, a joint um, aim in improving uh, care for mothers and babies, and that's how we, we've come to be working together. Um, myself as a midwife and Sarah as a neonatologist, uh, and also for our, we share um, a passion for quality improvement and improving outcomes. Um, this um, shows a, a bit of a diagram in the background there of the southwest, and that's the area that we have been covering with our Periprem project. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of traveling to do up and down um, that particular geographical area. So um, just to share, these are uh, the rest of, or some of the rest of our team um, of, for Periprem. Um, the neonatal leads, um, Sarah and, and Karen Lloyd, who are our leads um, and our obstetric leads, and very importantly, our parent representatives who've been with us on this journey from the very beginning. So why Periprem? Well, Periprem um, has really come from a desire to improve outcomes for our very tiniest babies. Um, being born early, um, particularly very early, is the leading cause of cerebral palsy and child mortality. So that was one of our, our main drivers um, for launching Periprem Care Bundle. Um, it's also part of NHS policy to reduce newborn brain injury and death by 25% by 2020 and by 50% by 2025. And as such, it is a major part of the maternity and neonatal safety improvement program, with one of the key drivers being to um, optimise care and stabilisation of preterm babies. So there were lots of, of drivers there, um, but not just that, there was also a passion um, from Karen and from Sarah, um, who had both been working within their units to improve outcomes um, and had been um, conscious very much of the evidence that is um, part of uh, the, the driver behind us choosing the elements that we have chosen um, for Periprem. So what is Periprem? Well, Periprem is a care bundle, as I've said, um, and it's, it's very ambitious as a care bundle because we've actually got 11 elements to this care bundle. Um, it builds very much on what we learned from Preset, uh, which was a, a national program ultimately of prevention um, uh, of cerebral palsy for preterm infants. Um, and it's very driven by a quality improvement methodology. Um, we've covered all 12 perinatal units across the Southwest. Uh, and introduce these uh, 11 evidence-based interventions um, to reduce uh, brain injury and mortality. Uh, and when we started this in the West of England, um, it was clear that it was also something that uh, the Southwest Academic Health Science Network always also wanted to um, take part in. And so we joined forces um, with them. And as you can see, um, the, on this uh, infographic here, these are the elements of the care bundle, um, place of birth, um, antenatal steroids, which we've known from some time is um, improves outcomes for babies, antenatal magnesium sulfate, which was uh, the precept um, program, intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis, optimal cord management, um, often called delayed cord, uh, delayed cord care, early maternal breast milk, caffeine, probiotics, volume guaranteed uh, or volume targeted ventilation and prophylactic hydrocortisone. So a number of very um, important and evidence-based um, interventions. 
And our aim was for 70% of mothers and babies to receive all the interventions for which they were eligible. As I said previously, it, we've also aligned with national policy um, and um, the BAPM toolkit as well. The British Association of Perinatal Medicine also developed a toolkit um, for improving outcomes for premature babies. And this uh, table just shows you um, what we've included in the Periprem care bundle, uh, which is also covered by the BAPM toolkit, so aligns with BAPM, and then the maternal and neonatal safety improvement uh, program care bundle, um, which is something that all um, units across the country will be uh, implementing. The whole uh, sort of bundle, the whole project, whole program is very parent and perinatal team focused. It's been co-produced by parents who have lived experience of preterm birth. There's been a shared vision um, and really it's been delivered by perinatal teams working together. And, and that's driven the success of the project. So midwives, neonatologists, obstetricians, neonatal nurses, all working together in periprem teams to deliver the project. How is periprem being delivered? Well, we started off <laughs> at the beginning of January 2020 with great plans for uh, meeting up with everybody. As you saw in the, uh, in the map at the beginning, it's quite a lot of distance to cover. Uh, we had hotel venues booked. Um, we had train journeys booked. We had silver QI uh, quality improvement face-to-face -face training. Um, and obviously, come the pandemic, um, we couldn't do any of that. Um, that all had to, had to be put on hold. And we did think at that point we might have to put the whole project on hold. Um, but we asked people whether they would like to continue. Um, and the overwhelming response was yes. Um, but we would going to have to do it in a very, very different way. Um, people felt they really wanted to still focus on improvement in care for, for babies and for families. And so um, they were prepared to spend the time um, on working on this, uh, working on this project with us. So we set up lots of share and learn events. Um, we did a whole series very quickly of online videos. Um, each element of our care bundle, we have a, a, a video. So there's a whole series of webinars, lots of resources on our website um, that people can download the resources um, and use them as they wish. QI coaching is absolutely key. Uh, and these, this is Alice and Nushan and Sally, who are three of our QI coaches, um, but really working as a dynamic between the coaches and the periprem teams um, and a lot being driven by the clinical units uh, and what they needed and their own individual needs. And to record the data, we developed an optimization tool so every element of the care bundle required um, data submission on a monthly basis. We also had day-to-day -day run charts, um, lots of sharing. If people were finding one element difficult, they would share how they'd overcome that um, with the team. So uh, we've managed online virtually um, to continue with the project. So I'm now going to hand over to Sarah to take you through some more um, about the Periprem project. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Um, so I think for me, the goal of Periprem has always been to give these babies the very, very best chance at an optimal, long and happy life. And we know that the chance of that happening really depends on some key interventions in the perinatal period. Lots of the interventions aren't necessarily new. As Anne said, we've been doing steroids for some time, but are we timing them properly? Um, but there are other interventions where the evidence has been around for four or five years, for example, deferred cord clamping, and yet it's not implemented universally and very variably. And you only have to look at the National Neonatal Audit Project, the NAP report from this year, 
where you can see all your own units data or your own networks data to see that there's huge variability across the country in both survival, brain injury, necrotizing enterocolitis. And we really need um, to share that responsibility in making this better. And that means that every single one, sorry, Anne, could you go back one? Thank you. Sorry, uh, clicked okay, too early. Thank you. <laughs> every single um, member of the perinatal team from neonatologists to obstetricians, to neonatal nurses and crucially to midwives needs to have the responsibility resting on their shoulders to take that baby from an in utero environment through delivery, through stabilization, and to make sure that they get all these interventions to give them the best chance to survive, thrive, grow up, be able to run around, be able to help talk and interact with the world around them. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> so, how are we doing this? I think um, we can reflect back on what's been a fascinating year in many ways. Um, but for Periprem, I think the enthusiasm from all 12 teams across the region to partake in this and, and get stuck in despite the pandemic was fantastic. So we have an obstetrician, a neonatologist, a nurse and a midwife in every single one of the 12 units. They often delegate and bring in other people, but they are the periprem leads. And you cannot, cannot overestimate the importance of perinatal team working and culture. We cannot fix these problems um, in silos. We, we have to stop being separate neonatal or obstetric or midwifery teams and come together. We need to share responsibility for the outcomes. And I meet with each of those teams on a regular basis. This morning, I met with the Exeter team and the Cornwall team. And we look at their data. Um, we scrutinize cases where things haven't necessarily gone to plan. We talk about sustaining and embedding. How are they certain that every baby gets deferred cord clamping, not just when it's the periform team on service or on call? And a lot of that is about midwifery um, champions really being the one person in theatre that stops during the huge checklist for a cesarean to say, we're going to do deferred call clamping here. So I think the QI coaching and support cannot be um, uh, really, it is so important at unit level. But also the resources that we've had have been really useful and the branding of those resources as a journey. The Anne talked about how this very closely aligns to the MATNEO safety improvement program and Periprem has been the vehicle for delivery for that in the southwest. But what it's done is it's really branded it so that people, um, for example, when I was talking to the team in Cornwall this morning, they were describing being on the delivery suite, knowing that there's a woman at risk of preterm labour and talking about whether she's been peripremed or whether the baby's been peripremed have we got that pathway mapped out for them and I really think it's vital we do it as a bundle it would be awful if we implemented deferred cord clamping for all but lost sight of the importance of keeping that baby warm with normothermia for example it has to be done as a journey um, and that can be quite ambitious but it is achievable and the transformation in all 12 units across the southwest has been absolutely fantastic to see. Our resources are all freely available, so please do go and have a look at some of them if you find if you're interested in this area. Thank you, Anne. And this is just um, some of the pictures of teams around the region. With their Periprem branding, you can see lots of them make Periprem boards with a message of the month or how are we doing on this element at the moment. There's loads of really useful infographics and you can't um, really do this enough, I don't think. We, let, let's, let's go back to the deferred core clamping example. When I talk to people about, well, well why, why should you wait that minute before you clamp the cord? People talk about better iron stores, maybe a less need for transfusion, maybe something about inotropes. But really the absolute take home figure is that it reduces the baby's risk of dying by a third. And if we think about the risk of harm of clamping early, then actually suddenly implementation starts to become really important. 
and our infographics for each of the bundle elements talk about those kind of key take home messages. And the teams around the region have come back now, they're, they're really in the embedding and sustaining phase about how, how much knowing the difference really makes about the kind of pride that people take when, when they know that they've really championed a whole peri-prem journey for the, for the babies. Thank you, Anne. Sorry about my alarm going off then. <laughs> Fine, no worries. It's a, you know, for me to, so the other thing that's been really, really handy is having this passport and we have both the patient health version, which really empowers parents. And you'll hear them talking about the video, talking about that on the video in a minute. But it really helps teams as well. I work in a local neonatal unit, so not every single one of my colleagues is a neonatal specialist trainee or a neonatologist. And so when they're on call, they say it's really handy to have this because they can just go through and literally check off all the interventions. Um, and it's also very helpful for adequate data collection as well. Thank you, Anne. This is the parent health version of it, which I shall leave the parents to describe themselves. Um, so just finally, we want to show you a little bit of the data from the Southwest. And you'll see this is one of uh, an example of our network dashboard on the topic. And you can see it's up and down sometimes there's places where we need to do some more work. But I think I perhaps draw your attention to deferred cord clamping, where we have started as a region about 45% of babies getting deferred cord clamping. Then um, uh, towards the end of last year, we were at 64%. And right at the very end and start of this year, we've come up to 85% of the region. So the change has been particularly noticeable. And there have been other areas where it's really improved, but we've had a real change in the overall bundle compliance too. Thank you, Anne. So here's one where we've got more work to do as a region. We're not great at getting place of birth right. And that's a really tough one to sort out. Very complex process mapping for that improvement journey. And it's still up and down. And I think we've, we've started to work on that more at a strategic level. Thank you, Anne. Maternal breast milk's re been a real success story. So we aim to get the first dose of maternal breast milk, as in colostrum, into the baby within six hours of them being born. And that's every single baby below, born below 34 weeks, regardless of how tiny or how sick they might be. They can all have buccal colostrum. And the change in that has been enormous. Thanks, Sam. So just finally, here's some more pictures of where we've got to, but a real summary of where we are at as a region. We have had 370 periprem babies since we launched the project. And you can just see on here the kind of numbers that are involved. I think one of the things that's most striking is that this is a region the size of New Zealand with a large population and 12 separate teams. And the collaboration between those teams has been fantastic. And the collaboration across obstetrics, maternity and neonatology has been key. And I think now we're ready to show you the parent video. Is that right, Anne? Yes, yeah, yeah. Just uh, a few little um, bits of feedback that we've had on the project. Um, that's just to thank some of our partners um, in this project. And I will now um, have to stop the share for one moment um, so that I can... Um, show you the film. Uh, hang on a minute. I think I need to share my screen first before I do that. That would be good. Being a mother is just it's just something I've always wanted. There's a lot of information out there and you talk to friends that have children and they give you their views on what it's like to be a mother. But when it comes down to it, you actually have no idea. I was scared, nervous, anxious, confused. Things went quite badly wrong at 29 weeks. Nothing could have prepared me for actually how terrifying those moments were. 
a lot of Googling on our phones, you know, survival rates, uh, health issues. Everything just went out the window. Everything we'd thought we were going to have and how we thought it was going to happen. Uh, we were just completely out of control. I remember receiving the Periprem passport um, quite early on. Um, that's when this, the Periprem care um, started to rate right from the start. It was really helpful to just kind of have it laid out on the table, here's what's happening and why. But I remember looking at it and referring to it and I can see here, I don't know if you can see that it's broken down into the relevant sections. It was nice because it prepared us for what we were inevitably going to see. Uh, the things that we were aware of straight away were to explained around the steroids. Um, I started on magnesium sulfate, which also was to help treat my preeclampsia. And at that point, my midwife helped me to hand express some colostrum ready for Georgia when she was born. I remember someone telling me about the plastic bag um, to, to keep them warm. The, the complete package with the parent passport and the clinical passport is just, it's excellent. Like all these interventions are here to help your baby and you. Um, what does POPO mean to us? Um, well, safe adult's life. Yeah. Knowing the Periprem bundle was being used really helped us feel confident and supported. Everything that was outlined in the bundle that just helped show how closely all these different members of, t of the team are working together to do everything they can to help your babies. Um, and I think it's just absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. So it's that's that's the final word really um, to the parents. Um, thank you.